Hey folks, Quill18 here, and welcome to something we haven't done in some time, which is a Let's Play of Europa Universalis 4. Which is funny, because to me, I always say, all Paradox games have to compare themselves to EU4, which I consider to be the king of all Paradox games, and yet we haven't played in some time, so it's definitely time to get back to it. I actually haven't played any EU4 since Leviathan came out, um, really, really eager to get back into this, and I was trying to decide who to play as, and I thought, you know, okay, I think, I think I want to play in, in the larger Europe area, because it tends to be where a lot of the exciting action happens, but I don't want to play any of the countries I've played before, I also kind of stay out of, um, the sort of HRE, like, Germany area, and Italy, well, Italy was tempting, but I was like, I'm not sure, and then I decided, you know what? Croatia has a pretty color, so we're playing as Croatia. Um, there doesn't appear to be any real, like, you know, strategy guides or anything online that other people have posted for Croatia. The, the few I found were, like, from before Leviathan, where Croatia isn't a starting nation. You can re release it from Hungary, but that's about it. So we're going to be going in here pretty blind, but that should be a lot of fun. We are in a personal union under Hungary. Now, I did do a little bit of a test run. I played for, like, five years or something just to get a, a feel for, wait, how, how is this supposed to work? Um, and we actually should be able to get some people to support our independence, hopefully without too, too much difficulty. So we should be able to break away from Hungary fairly rapidly. So fingers crossed on that. Um, let's take a look at the state of things. Um, so yes, we are in a personal union with Hungary at this time. The, the, the same king, the king of Hungary is the king of Croatia, which is what's going on, but we're the junior partner. Um, we have some coastline, but not much. This period of time, uh, Venice had taken over a lot of Dalmatia, so obviously we're going to have to have wards with Venice at some point and get our coast back over here. Um, we've got a couple of smaller neighbors. We've got Sili, Chili. Maybe just silly over here. I don't know. Again, we're not going to pronounce anything, right? They are like totally 100% independent, which is interesting. They are part of the Empire. Okay, so that's going to be important to keep um, keep an eye on. If we go... Do I have... I guess I don't have the Imperial map mode as one of my shortcuts. Um, although, do I have it as an alternate over here? Oh, that's the truce one. Okay. But the Imperial map mode is easy to find anyway. There it is. Yes, 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 yes. Now, I mean, Venice, I find that most of the time, now things might change between patches and balance. I find that in a lot of the games, um, AI Venice doesn't have a great time. Usually it gets booped by Austria, though not always. Sometimes it goes the other way around. So we'll see. We do have a, star, a small starting fleet over here. We've got a single light ship, two galleys, four transports. Um, our trade situation, which I always consider, sometimes I wonder, do I overvalue trade in EU4? I don't think that's the case. I think trade is incredibly important and incredibly powerful in EU4, and um, it's it's a great way to make tons of money. And in fact, it, it very rapidly trade um, exceeds your tax dollars over here. So we do start off by collecting in the Rugusan trade node. Our capital is in the Rugusan trade node over here, um, and that's not a terrible node because we can flow trade in from Constantinople and Alexandria. No doesn't come directly from Alexandria. Interesting. Constantinople, yes, but that's it. Now, long term, I suspect what will happen is we'll be moving our tra center of trade, or whatever it's called, to the Venetian node. Because the control we'll have over Ragusa will help us flow things into Venice. I mean, we'll want to wait until we've got a decent amount of trade power in the Venetian node before we make our collection point there. But I think long term, that's what's going to happen. I don't know exactly how long that'll take. Maybe it'll be in 50 years. Maybe it'll be in 200 years. Uh, no clue over there. I mean, we still have to deal with the fact that we've got to break away from Hungary here if we want to be independent. The thing is, we could decide not to rush our independence from Hungary. It is actually quite helpful to be, you know, to be attached to a much larger country than we are over here. Um, but, you know, at the same time, Hungary might be getting its butt kicked from the Ottomans and different things like that. So we'll see. Um, one of the things that I did notice in my little test game um, is the Ottomans were actually pretty okay with supporting our independence. In fact, I was able to get them in my, my little test. Again, I just like ran the game for I think something like five years just to get a sense of like what the political situation was around here um so 
that was something that definitely worked. So I think first thing we might do with our diplomats is go ahead and improve relations over with the Ottomans. Now we do have a lot of new features here in Leviathan. Um, I have read through the patch notes and things like that to remind myself of what the situation was because again it had been a little while. Um, we may want to go and build up trust with the Ottomans as well. We'll see. One of the things I'm curious about, oh this is actually quite convenient. Because we, um, right, well that's right, no we can't set we can't set rivalries because we are a junior partner, which is too bad. But mostly what we want to do is we want to look at who hates Hungary and make friends with them. So Lithuania, which is currently independent, although might become a junior partner of Poland later, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. And then Bohemia over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to improve relations with all of these. And then what we're going to do afterwards is ask to support independence on a few people. Luckily, if we do use the macro builder over here, the support independence is in the filter. Listen, when you would do it right away, um, what we'll do is we'll let the cycle for a little bit and see if we can get a bit of a critical mass going on. In terms of our initial economy, well, let's take a look. We've got ourselves, so we've got six total provinces going on, 10 development, is the best we got. So we don't have a ton of development. Uh, Rijika, again, I apologize, none of these pronunciations are gonna be anywhere close to correct, um, is our most developed province out of 10, which is not a powerhouse, although 10's not bad. All these all these sixes are pretty poor here. Um, we we do have silk, or cloth, not silk, cloth in a few provinces. We got fish, cloth, cloth, grain, cattle, and more cloth over here. And cloth isn't bad. Um, it's got a decent price compared to some of the others, so, you know, it's not a terrible initial trading situation. Um, we do also have a natural harbor over here in Rijika, which is giving us additional trade power, which is really good. And I believe this will get multiplied by our marketplace once we get to that tech. So that part's going to be really good. Um, the bad is the fact that we are, yeah, we are junior partner running the interregium right now, which is also giving us 000 in terms of a leader. So our political power or monarch power is really not fantastic. Our primary culture is Croatian. We also accept Dalmatian, although we don't have any Dalmatian population currently. Uh, that'll be what happens when we take more of the coast over here, I believe. These are going to be, yeah, see, see Dalmatian over there. So that's what we're going to be looking at. Um, so yeah, politically... Oh, that's Bohemia. I don't know what's got that. Uh, yeah, junior partner under Hungary. We've got Reconquest CBs on Venice, the independent CB on Hungary. We got access, that's fine. Um, financially, things are a little bit rough right now, which is to be expected when you're starting. Well, first of all, all countries starting off don't have a lot of money to kick around, and the smaller countries is that much more the case. Um, since we're not instantly going to war, I'm going to drop the army maintenance, and I'm also going to, before I forget, I'm going to go ahead and mothball my fort in my capital, which we're going to talk about in a scooch. Um, let's trade over here. Yeah, the tech is going to come a little bit slower because of our low monarch power, but we'll see what the, the deal is. Let's take a look at our missions over here. It's not a tremendously huge um, mission tree. Also, currently as is, we don't have any decisions to form a new country. You know me, I love hitting those tag switch buttons if they're available. I don't think anything else does that over here. Our early missions are for us to get independence, which I think we can complete this the second we declare independence war. I don't think we have to wait until we win. And this will give us a ton of claims all over the place. So it will very naturally lead us into our expansion plans from there. Trustworthy allies have an alliance. So two countries, we need to be allied to two countries and they have to have 150 opinion of us. That'll happen pretty automatically. We do have a thing afterwards to have uh, two subjects, which is quite interesting. We're going to want to go ahead and do that because then it leads into a ton more missions. So, uh, but we tend to do that at some point, regardless whether we rush it or not, we'll see. High income over here, have an income of at least 5.62, which is certainly more than we've got now. Um, maybe if we do well in this war, one of the things we could do is ask Hungary for war reparations in addition to independence. That might help us complete the high income over here. Uh, and the benefit from this is, I mean, it's fine. I'm not going to complain about that, but mostly it's important because it leads to everything else. But this will obviously happen at some point. It's interesting the 5.62, I wonder what that's based on. And I wonder if this will change, like if this income is based on your total development. So, you know, if you keep, if you grow, but you keep increasing your expenses, then I don't know. Global dominance, what is this? Oh, this is for us to become the strongest trade power in Ragusa. So this will happen at, uh, at some point automatically. Um, you know, we may do something at some point to push us over the edge, even if it like caught, like we might overdo our light ships which is actually never a terrible idea to be honest um to push us over the edge to get this done but it's it's gonna happen at some point regardless um defender of the faith in the age of discovery so that'll happen eventually um 
We need to have three provinces in Slavonia with development at least 10. All right. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Let's talk about our capital here. So the one thing I don't like about our capital it is it is in grassland over here. And the reason I say that, grassland actually does have certain benefits, which are really good. But your capital always has a fort. And I like, I mean, ideally you want your forts to be in rough terrain, because then you get, like, to take advantage of defensive bonuses. Uh, so here there's no defensive bonus from bringing the grassland, so I don't like that from a military perspective. But otherwise, it's kind of okay. We could consider end up moving our capital later on, depending on how things shake out. We will see. Um, yeah, Slavonia over here. So, it, is it just me or was it not highlighting? Oh, I guess because... Because we already own it. I was like, why is it not highlighting? But... Yeah, um, three provinces have to have at least ten development. So these all have six. It's quite expensive. What do we get as a reward? Then for the rest of the game, we get a discount to development cost. Well, that's kind of cool, actually. And fill up all our buildings in Zagreb. These are actually pretty decent uh, missions, to be honest. Um, I don't think we're doing anything there or there. I mean, I'll try to remember to increase our, our stability at some point. Da, da, da. Is this? Yeah, no active subject interactions. Um, and then the estates. I'm trying to remember. We don't have a lot of crown land. We may want to start, you know, working our way towards pulling that. The nobility is also quite potent right now. Um, we could yoink some things out. One of the things I'm going to do, I think I'm going to run... If I recall correctly, I enjoyed doing this. Uh, supremacy over the crown is going to be fine. Uh, it will give the nobles more influence. Well, I guess it gives everyone, all these guys, more influence, but more loyalty over here. And it's not a bad thing to set up with the extra loyalty, especially if I do this. Oh, yeah, it's the equivalent um, equilibrium point, but that's okay. See, they all have 50% loyalty right now. So if I seize land, they'll all lose 20 but that will mean they're not going to drop below 30, so we shouldn't get any rebels. And then it'll bounce back up. There you go. That should be okay. And then give us his land, so we'll probably do some of those. Um, I'll probably run a summon to Diet right away. Now, hopefully, it'll be one of those missions where it wants to develop, because a lot of these will be that. But ideally, it would be develop one of these three. Prestige at least 30. Uh, Lika. So, two missions to improve Lika. And then this one here is just have 30 prestige. I mean, I do tend to like to take the things to improve, because it's it's not bad to do it early. It, I always felt to develop our economy a little bit, um, and then, you know, it's pretty easy to um, do this. Uh, production for... Okay, so both of these require two button clicks. Uh, you only make fish, so I'm not going to do the production one over here. Although he will give us money right away. This one will give us prestige. I don't know. I'll do the clergy one. We'll do this, and oh, I need to improve one of these other values a wee bit. Again, the fish isn't terribly enticing, so I'll spend the military power, and then we'll wait until we get some admin power, and we'll do something like that. Um, do I want to change my focus? Honestly, right now, I think I'm going to keep them balanced. Do we want to pause right away? I think so, right away. I'm 13 minutes into the episode. But, you know, planning is, is, is a big thing. Let's go and break off our light ship over here. Right, this is the event of Italy and the Empire, so they're going to go through some shenanigans over there and mostly break away from the Empire. We'll protect trade in Ragusa, although one ship's not going to do much. I think I'm going to mothball this fleet here because we're going to try to save as much money as possible early on. We would love to get some advisors, but I think our money is too low to justify that. Uh, Golden Bow. Oh, sure, now we get the development cost discount. Womp womp. I mean, we could grab the National Tax Modifier. We would, it would semi-pay for itself. You know what? I think it's going to be worth it. I mean, he's not actually going to pay for himself, but we're still going to be running in the green. Well, while we're not doing any maintenance. But yeah. Now, the one tricksy thing with uh, the Ottomans, although I think we will be able to get them on our side. Um, neutral attitude, da 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 da. I, I think it, once they're in war, we can't get them to support, but we'll see what we can do afterwards. Okay, we'll spend a little bit of time improving the relations. We don't need to jump immediately into independence. I'd like to do it. I think we're going to play that we want to get it fairly soon, but 
it's not the end of the world if it takes a few. Okay. So, that's interesting. So we went from the Interregnum leader to Regency Council leader, which is still 0-0. Zero, zero. We do have an heir, but it's going to take forever to get there. Okay, so we still don't get anything going on here until we... That's, I guess, one of the values to declaring the penance. We'll actually get a reasonably good leader fairly quick. Let's take a look over here. Support and penance. So no one's willing... Well, Bohemia would if we had a diplomat. And Lithuania is no longer interested. I'm going to keep improving some relations. And we'll see where, what shakes out. I still need to go and boop this by one more over here. We do have these new uh, buttons here to expand infrastructure. Turn the main. Time to teach them how to war. All right, so France and uh, England are going to go to war. Pretty typical. Sometimes France just gives up Maine or whatever. But I think they're weighted something like 90% to go to war because, you know, why not, right? It's fun. We like warring. Okay, I'll go ahead and, uh, oops, next month, I'll boop this. The sooner we do this, the sooner we get a little bit more tax income, and then we finish the extra mission, and, you know, that's all fine. There we go. It's going to delay getting our technology, um, but at the same time, you know, well, we're not going to get it very quickly anyway, and at least this way we'll get the 5%, if not a 10% discount to the tech, because we will be a bit behind. If anything, since we're going to fight a war of independence, I could put the focus on military so that we can get our military tactics. But I just don't like the idea of dropping these values so low. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter. You're getting the exact same total number of points. You're just shifting them around. But I don't know. Feels bad, man. And often I like to put it towards admin because, I mean, sometimes I like to, again, because early on the tax value is not that big, um, getting some extra admin for tax value is kind of nice. Uh, I like unlocking the church right away. I know, like, a lot of people have said, eh, the math doesn't really justify what you do here, Quill. But that's what I always like to do, right? Is I get the churches, I get a few of them built early because they do generate a little bit more income right away. Um, and they tend to have, like, like you build them early enough, you get the pay payback. And it tends, I feel it tends to stabilize my economy very early on. Um, since the trade values are so low, I feel like I'm really dependent on the tax dollars early on. So I like to put the the focus on admin so that I can get the temple set up. Plus, maybe I've improved the admin a little bit, which will make the churches give us that much more money. Which is why when we do the diet over here, I quite like to take the clergy one to boost the admin. So it all sort of ties in together kind of thing. Plus, if there's early wars, I want the extra admin power to do some coring. And I might be convincing myself to go ahead and just set the focus here, but I'll leave it for now. What is this? Uh, Wurtembergen demand and Croatian supply. Burgers get loyalty. Oh, we get a little more trade power and goods produced. Oh, that's quite nice. Okay. So there's some religiosity going on, which I don't know if we're going to get involved in. I don't think we're going to stay Catholic. I think I feel like I want to play with either the Protestant or the Reformed Boutons. Military divided. So how long does this last? 10 years of fort defense or 10 years of siege ability. I'll take the siege ability. I think it'll be kind of relevant. Oh, the Ottomans, yes. Okay, let's go and yoink you out of there. Um, did you did you just start a war? Oh, they have a truce with Hungary. Well, that's probably going to be our limiter until okay, three years of truce. Okay, that's, I think, you know what? That's going to be our, our signal when to go. Who did I just yoink this out of? I think Bohemia, which is over here. What we'll probably do is wait until then, and that's going to be when we when we pull the trigger. Then we'll have the Ottomans on our side. I mean, we may not need the Ottomans on our side. Teutonic Order, Austria, no, okay. We'll do that. Sounds good. One of the things I can also do is we can... Um, where's the boot known to build favor? Improving relations, but there is a... Oh, yeah, there it is. Curry favors over here. Which, um, I, I want to do some sort of joke. Like, oh, curry favors is the name of my... Of the the Indian restaurant I want to open. Or or something like that. Or if, if Lucifer had decided instead of going to LA and opening a nightclub, he'd gone to Delhi to open a restaurant, then he'd call it curry favors. I probably just shouldn't have even tried, but 
It tickles me. Um, I like the stability, although if we had the um, the Noble Mission to raise our prestige, we could have done some of this. We don't care about the half price uh, skill 2 artist because it's still going to be too expensive for us to grab. So we'll do the stability. It would have been nice if we could push it all the way up to 3 here. If I hadn't spent the points on things, I could have boosted the stability because that is one of the things I like to do early, which is another one of the reasons I tend to like to put the focus on admin because I do spend a lot of it. But we'll just go ahead and add the plus 1 stability, which is going to be good for a variety of things in our empire. Balance 1.44 over here, which isn't bad. I wonder how close, what's our total income over here? 4.06. Yeah, okay, that's still a long way to go to accomplish that mission, but it is kind of interesting. Oh, one thing I want to consider, do I just want to drop the knights right away? I mean, they are a little stronger, but they are more expensive. Like, they're more than twice the price. Are they more than twice as good? No. I think, for the sake of our economy, I'm going to go ahead and trash these Knigets right away. It is a shame because you don't get the manpower back or anything, but... Um, and yeah, I'm not saving up for anything because we are far away from a the church and whatnot. So I'm going to go ahead and build to the force limit with our infantry. Wow, it's been so long since I played EU4. I'm worried I'm going to be making some really obvious, like, derps just based on the fact that, like... Okay. We are at war. Interesting. Somewhat annoying because it does mean we're paying for maintenance now. Burgundian Conquest of Liege. So we are on the attacker side. Our side has a numbers advantage, although that would mostly rely on me, not, but I don't think I necessarily want to go anywhere. It's quite far away. I don't even know if I'm going to bother sending any troops. I think I'm just going to sit at home. Yeah, I like it. I wonder if I should just... Uh, oh, I can't drill. I don't have a leader either. Um, I wonder if I should just drop my maintenance, despite being at war. Probably no one's coming over here. Screw it. We're going to do this. We're going to take some risks, because why not? Uh, I will keep my fort up, so that it doesn't instantly drop. I'm going to keep an eye out over here for some, some you know, red-shaded armies, some enemy armies marching through this area. But Austria's on our side, so we've got vision through here for the war. So, no, no one's going to come over here. You know what? It's fine. And you cardinal, not bald forts. That's okay. Uh, point a local leader. Hold on, does that mean... So Lithuania's going to stay independent. All right. Probably best overall for us if it doesn't generate a giant power over here. The downside is maybe a little less coordination in fighting the Ottomans in the long term. But we are going to be befriending them in the short term. Profiteering in Uzbek. So, Glago would be pissed. But we would get reduced unrest, more trade, but let fewer local goods produced. I don't want rebels. I don't know if the plus two unrest would lead to anything. This is in the Slavonian region? Or just the province itself? It's hard to tell. Um, our unrest is absolutely negative. I think we'll do this. I think we'll take the extra... If it's only this province, livestock doesn't matter much. But I'll do this with the interest of... where? Is, who is Glagal? Who this? Oh, up over here. As I say, just in the interest of maybe keeping a bit more friends in case we need some more independence allies. I'm not, not convinced that was necessarily the ideal button, but I think it's very marginal either way. At this stage in the game, I think those, those numbers were going to be pretty microscopic in terms of differences. So yeah, this war, 3% war score. I mean, I don't really care who wins and loses. As long, really, we just don't want our, our stuff to be like stack wiped from having no maintenance. That would that would be the only bad outcome. There is actually someone coming over here, so let's do this. And I'm just gonna scooch away. Oh, that's the never mop ball, which I do like that it's there. Okay, I just wanted to make sure we may have had a buffer of like a month to build up our morale. So now, now we're gonna be okay. We we only have a sliver of a morale, but. The troop number should be fine. But wait until this guy gets booped by something. I mean, I could go and hunt them down, but why would I? That would cost me manpower, which would cost me more money to reinforce. I'm really not invested in helping out in this war. 
Okay, we'll recall that. We might want to do some curry favors. We can always spend it to increase trust in things as well for after the war to make sure we stay in an alliance with them. Because I think that's one of the things, right? I mean, Ducat so Sailors... Sorry. Ducat Soldiers, Sailors, Air, Trust. Prepare for war. We can break their lines to someone else. I don't know. I think it'll be... I think it'll be helpful to maybe do that. So how does this work? We now get 0.09 favors each month. Okay. I don't know. I mean, we could also just improve relations to someone else. But I think the Ottoman influence is going to be incredibly important for us. It looks like we are safe here again. So I'm going to go back and once again reduce the maintenance. And once again... Uh, mothball our forts. Because I really want to try to get away with saving as much money as possible, since I'm not interested in fighting here, and everything's looking fine. Golden Bull. Okay. How long does this last? Didn't you just do this? Can we tell what's running? Yeah, we can spend for indulgence, influence, meh. This lasts until the current Pope dies. Oh! Maybe that's what happened. Maybe the Pope died and then they had to pick another one. Okay. Oh, I still need to... Oh, no, no, I've done that already. Yeah, no agenda. Okay. And I don't want a sale of titles. Do I want to... Maybe I should have done this right away. I don't like the idea of losing more crown land. Because if it goes below 30, I think we get penalties to things. So, is this worth it? It might be. Cure power costs, but more influence. I don't think I care about the influence. I don't think I need the governing capacity right now. The absolution limit doesn't matter. I mean, more influence could be scary with the benefit and penalties from disloyal. But I think we're going to keep them loyal. Yeah, I mean, we'll have to, like, pull them away later when absolutism becomes an, a thing. I really want to run these. So what we need to do is we basically need to be able to yoink crown land well, I think we get 5%, so we'll be at 40%, so then I can grab, like, all three of these guys have one of these, I think, uh, sorts of power, but I'll probably do that. I'll wait until 40, and then I'll do that, and then maybe that's it. Yeah, it's been a while since we've done this, since I played some EU4, so I'm trying to remember, like, where the balance goes and what can go wrong. That's mostly it. It's like, well, why don't I just hit the button? I'm a little, I'm paranoid that something is bad. Okay, so... Okay, well, we're only one year away. I mean, I could go ahead and preemptively ask these guys. Poland, I'm going to improve relations with you. I mean, you'd already jump in because I think you hate, yeah, you hate Hungary, so you're willing to, you know, hurt them. Um, Austria, you are aligned with Hungary. Who hates Austria? People state France. Well, let's go ahead and... Oh. Oh. Why can't I do it? Because he's not home yet. We want to prove over here. What is this? New trade research, heretical. Lose political power, lose prestige. I'm going to take the prestige hit. Rather than lose diplo power. We're still going on. There's an army sort of moving through here. Just in case. I think, I don't think he's coming to us. like fluctuating back and forth here i guess i don't need if i'm going to keep my army standing here i don't need to worry about unmothballing the fort so anti-clericalism so we gain a tiny bit of money piss off the burgers yeah so it's all six of one half a dozen so i don't know i'll take the one that gives me a little bit of money the burgers are disloyal but they'll get over it Interesting. Land of Commerce reduces their loyalty? Because it increases the loyalty. Oh, no, no, it all does. Interesting. 
What does that cost in loyalty? If I'm giving them more power. Maybe just they've got more power so they figure they can do whatever they want. And they don't have to listen to me. That might be the logic. Might be a bit of a balancing feature because it's such a good button to hit. Um. Shit. Maybe I should just leave my troops up all the time now. That I'm a little scared of. Uh, are you serious? Okay, I gotta pull back. Okay. All right. Well, we'll leave our things up now. Uh, he might still be coming. He does have a um. Does have a general? Which I don't. Now that my morale is basically there, I'm not gonna run away again if he comes. He might still kick our ass because of a general, and I really don't want to spend the points to get our own general. Because again, this is a war where we're not gonna lose anything in this war. Ideally, we'd prefer not losing any manpower from getting booped in the head, but we're all okay. Um, this war is annoying. We need it to end because the Ottomans won't support our independence if... Well, actually, it doesn't say anything about us being at war. So I guess no matter what, we have to wait for them to finish their conquest of Constantinople. This actually might work out timing-wise. I'm not sure, but... There's some definite possibilities here. If we get a... Next time we get a Diet, which will happen soon... Because they ask on their own? But... I don't know if they instantly ask, so we'll hit this button. We may choose the burger one and boost their um, their loyalty, and they can boost their influence as well. Um, and then we want to get everyone to the position where they're above 50%. Does it tell us what the break-even point is? Yeah, 52% or the equilibrium. Only 48, but the clergy's got the extra benefit. And here we'll give you a bit of a boost. Because, again, we'd like them to be above 50 so that I can yoink some land from them, which is going to be the ideal. I guess we'll put a cut in here. I cannot tell you how excited I am to be playing Europa Universalis 4 again. It has been way too long, and it really is, to me, and I've always said this, and I don't think my opinion has changed, despite how good the other Paradox Grand Strategy games are, right? Hearts of Iron 4, brilliant. Stellaris, so much fun. CK3, oh my god, fantastic. EU4, something something, Victoria, Imperator, etc., etc. But EU4, to me, is the crown jewel in the, uh, the 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 grand strategy treasury of paradox. I don't know where I'm going with this metaphor, but it is always good, and it, it's shameful that it's been so long. Thanks for watching. I hope you're going to enjoy this series. I hope I'm going to enjoy this series, although I suspect I will. I'll see you next time, folks. Bye-bye.